cut into it. Oh, the reason it didn't run, so I just wanted to give you guys um, a little like side note. I was, <laughs> I tried running it like 10 minutes, like 10 minutes ago, and it gave me an exception right here. Maybe I can scroll up. All right. But it gave me an exception like right here, and it's because I had renamed something. So I renamed it back and it works now. So uh, let me just get started then. It's main right here, run file. <clears throat> All right, so I remember last time I presented this uh, professor, I believe it was you, the one that said, wouldn't it be cool if the user could choose their own background? And that's what this little button is here for. So if we just click choose background, it takes you to your uh, computer files. So I'll just go to my desktop uh, real quick. And then if I sort the images and I scroll to the side, this is the current one that I have right now, which is the Galaxy, and then this is a different one. Boom, changes the background. If you want to change it back, you just do the exact same thing. Uh, you go back here, desktop, go to the back, and this is my Galaxy one. I added this uh, on the weekend. All right, now for uh, first feature. So we have add student, add class, things that you would normally need in the gradebook. So if we add student, um, any recommendations for name? Maybe just John Doe for now. Uh, John Doe is in Java, and John Doe has 100 in Java. His ID is uh, 0123467. First name Bleep, first name, OK, I got you. <laughs> Actually, wait, I want to showcase something else with that. But uh, I'll keep it in mind. So John Doe, okay, add student. Student was added. And now you said you want a different name, right? So we go over here to edit students, and we click on uh, John Doe. Um, first name, Bleep. Ooh, not Bleep. Bleep, last name, uh, Blop. And maybe, maybe he changed classes. Now he's in uh, calculus. And he changed his ID number. Now it's uh, 007. And then we save it. OK. We go back to students. And then we can see that his name was changed over here. Um, if you want to add a class, you just do the same thing. Go over here, add a class. Uh, name of the class. Um, maybe chemistry, since we were just talking about it. Chemistry 1025. And then class period, uh, in high school we call it period. Uh, anywhere else you just call it like a date. But let's just say it's uh, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from uh, 9 to, whoops, 9 to 9.50. That's usually a regular time here, a.m. And we go to add class. Class was successfully added. We go here, edit class, and then we see it right here, chemistry, Monday, Wednesday. Now, let's say you want to change the name of that class. Maybe it's not chemistry 1025, it's uh, chemistry uh, 1045. And then it's now from Tuesday, Thursday, whoops, Thursday, from 9.05 to 12, whoops, 12. 10 p.m. Save it. Class will successfully change. And then we go back here to classes. And when you scroll down, you see that the class was changed. So this is pretty cool. Um, next thing I want to show you is this. Now, this is uh, exactly what it looks like. Um, it's where you can add and delete students, and then you can also search for students as well, and um, put in their attendance. So I'll just put myself, for example, Jose, uh, Java, grade zero, uh, present. And then, as you can see, it adds it over here. This table right here is just like one of these standard tables that you get from, um, from FBeans that you can just add. Uh, next, what, what if we want to add a uh, bleep blob? We can just add bleep blob. And he's in uh, calc. Lisa, OK, we'll add Lisa. Lisa, add Lisa. Oh, 
Uh, what's your last name? Lisa? Martin? Okay, so we'll do Martin. Uh, Lisa, you're gonna be in, uh, you're gonna be in Java. Uh, here we go, you have 100, but you were absent, so we'll just add you. Now, <laughs> if we wanna delete me, if we want to delete me, then you just press delete, and then, are you sure you want to delete the student? Click yes, and then you don't see me anymore. Um, I'll add one more student just to showcase this next feature. So I'll just add, uh, um, Leanne, you want to be added? Okay. So, Leanne, and then I'm guessing your last name is Nelson. Uh, Leanne, you're gonna be in Calc, and uh, you you kind of serve that Calc. You had a 65, let's say, and then put you were present. Add, but now let's say you you pass the class, then we can just delete you and then re-enter your information with um. Let's say you had like a grade override or something, maybe. Now you have 100 and you were present. You just add you. And if we want to search, uh, oh, I accidentally deleted Lisa, but whatever. <laughs> if you want to search for a student, uh, you have to do it in this format. It's uh, last, first name, first, comma, last name. And then if you click OK, it just says student was found. So it lets you know that a student is in here. <clears throat> all right. so. Those are all the features for now. Oh, and uh, this exit thing, it does exactly what you think it does. It just changes. It just exits. Uh, so maybe I can go into the code a little bit. Um, I'll just start with this one. Since it's right here. The main code that you see for this one is, th these are all the import files, of course, from uh, Swing. And then if you go down here, this is the uh, file chooser that you see right here, this button, if I double click it, um, if you see, uh, what it does is that, <coughs> it's up here, um, when you click it, <coughs> when you click it, this launches, right? This over here is a uh, gradebook main, is the constructor for this specific JFrame. So, you get a new uh, file chooser, and then um, you build it here, essentially, right? And this over here that you see, extension filter, it's the part that I showed you where when you when you go down, you see start.images, which is this one, and then it gets specific uh, files, which are images, so JPEG, GIF, or PNG. Um, and then an if statement, um, it has an inbuilt function or method, I guess you could say, uh, JFile chooser approve option. So if everything went fine, then what you're going to do is set um, this new file to the selected file right here, and then it calls on this function, which is resize image, and it does exactly what the name suggests. Um, the image itself is a label, and so it's an icon on that label. What this does is it gets the, the file path that you provided up here, passes it into this method, and then it resizes the image so that it kind of looks to scale. Um, next, so I want to go over this one because I think that this, this one was the, the other most complicated one. Um, so for this one, since it involves both um, the classes and the uh, students, um, I had to actually. I think I only did. Yeah, I only did the classes. The classes array list over here, because the students, as you saw, the name is. What were you saying? You know what I want. Do it uh, this way, which is populate the array list so that all the classes show up. And then once I do that, on the combo box, I have to pass in an array for the classes, which is this one right, uh, right here. Um, when I populate the array list, then I have to go through the entire array list and set that those values equal to classes. 
right? So that when I pass it into the combo box over here, it's just the classes that I have before. Um, next, where this over here is the button for the add. So if we double click it, then you see that it's the add one. Um, if you run it and uh, and then you click add, it's gonna ooh. Uh, no. If you run it and then you click add, then it will basically give you a message saying you can't leave things blank. And that message goes for everything in the program. Like I've programmed it that way. See, like you can't leave anything blank. Uh, just a cool little feature that I thought I would add because I know we talked a lot about user interface and stuff. Ignore that. Um, <laughs> that's just because the array list was empty, as you can see here. Um, and then next, so what you have to do is add it to a schedules um, array list, which I have over here. And the array list is not necessarily to save the classes, but to show it on the table. So if I scroll down again, um, and then you see this for loop right here, what it's doing is getting the schedules array list and then um, essentially getting the information from there putting it in this objects array, and then that array gets passed into the uh, data table over here, and it adds the row as it's supposed to, because um, I have to do it in, in order over here. Um, last thing I'll show you, because I know other people have to present, is uh, this mechanism right here, the populate array list, this is what I did for just about every other uh, aspect in my program. So populate array list is exactly what it does. You get the object or the information inside of the file, and then you essentially add that to the, the array list that you have going on here. Because when you first load it in, the program doesn't really know what's um, inside the array list because it's never seen the array list before. But you save it in a file, so you just get it from the file and then you put it on the array. And uh, if we just go on, I'll do edit student because this one really has a lot of stuff. For this one, I needed the student's array list and the class array list because that little uh, combo box that you see over here for change class. For that, I need the actual classes. So I have to do the same uh, populate array list that you see over here, where you get it from the classes <laughs> file. But on this one, I had to do the extra step of uh, students. Now, I say extra steps. If you see familiarity between this and this, it's because I copied and pasted that, put it in here, changed the file name, and called it a day. Uh, <laughs> And then um, <clears throat> after after you essentially uh, loaded in the the classes, um, the user inputs all their information, and when you click on save, right? Again, you see this. Uh, if it's empty, send them the message. Else, what you're gonna do is get the selected uh, index from the combo box, so which class, is, which class was it that they selected, and then you want to go into the text fields and get that information. This dot trim here is a blessing, and what it does is that um, any spaces that you have in the, um, in the text field, it trims it, like it just gets rid of it, and it saves it as a regular string without spaces, love it. Um, also, I, I encountered uh, a bit of an issue at first with the syntax because the word class is an actual keyword in Java, so I had to put it as class one. And essentially, that just gets the, the index that you selected up here gets put into this. Um, it, it gets, this is a class object that gets put inside of the student. Um, array list because of course the student array list the student array list is an object that inside of it has the classes object in it I, I hope that made sense uh, and then you just go through it um, this for loop right here is to 
essentially um, know which of the selected indexes that you pick, like to make sure that the class that you pick is the class that's on the combo box. And then you just save it to the file and that is up here, which is save students to file. And this is just regular try catch um, exceptions for reading in files. Um, the last thing over here is the delete, which is what you see over here. And this just does the exact same thing um, this one up here does, but instead of adding uh, students, it removes them. So as you can see, um, when, uh, when you run through it, you're going to see that it's no longer in there so that when you save it, it saves without that information. And uh, I guess I guess that's it. Do you guys want to like, say it? I know I spoke a lot, but I was just trying to get through it quick. That was that was really good. All right, I, I love the reactions. And by the way, I, I love your presentation style. Very, very confident. So Jose, great work. Excellent work. All right. Um and you know it's funny, like um I think that the the changing of the image on it, it, it really makes it seem more like it makes it seem like a real grade book, you know? I mean, it is a real grade book, but I'm glad, I'm glad you implemented that. So that's super. Yeah, very professional. It looked professional. Okay, super. So let's see, who wants to go next? Who wants to go next? Uh, oh, who, who, um, who does not have a video to go today? Right. That's let. Let's check the. Let's check the. Um, let's check the list here. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Oh, someone's typing. Um, well, we can we can watch videos today too. We can watch videos today also, and then discuss them. That that works too. So let's see. Let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's go here to recent. See, I'm doing a screen recording, so of course my laptop is going crazy with being overloaded, but um, that's okay. Okay, so we are looking at the presentation, final project presentation. No, I'm doing it. It's okay. It's not a big deal. So we got here responses. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we've got 18 people responding, good. And we have today, uh, oh, everybody wants to present the 16th, okay. Well, today we have three people who signed up. So who is next for in class today? Just, we'll start with people who don't have videos, and then we'll go to the videos. But we'll, we're, we will have a pretty full class today. We, we will probably go to 750, or 740, rather. Okay, perfect, great. So I'll stop sharing. And, and now I'm muted. So go ahead.
Can you guys hear me? Share my screen. Which screen am I sharing from? Can you guys see the screen? And just let me check because I don't know which one of the monitors I have. Are you guys seeing um, IntelliJ right now? I see the other one. Cool. Yeah, I mean, so. My project, yeah, I was basically testing here. It was a um, console-based domino game, so it doesn't have any uh, GUI, but it's pretty. It's a lot of logic behind it. So when you run it, it asks you for your name, and my name, and it generates the dominoes for you. I don't know if uh, everyone else that play dominoes, it's like a Latin game. So then it gives you those, and then basically the program finds which out of the four players, the four players mean, okay. which of the four players, the other three are bots, uh, has the double six, and then the double six has to start. So when I hit enter, the bot three has a double six, so he plays it. So then I go, and then it tells me the numbers that I have, and then I can pick, and then... One feature that I added is that if you can play a domino on both sides, it'll let you choose which side to play. So if I say, for example, I want to play 6-5, uh, which is which I'm going to play number 6, I'll play the 6-5, and then the next block comes. I play the double 5, and it goes like that. 4, 6, and it's my turn again, I'm zero and four. And then also it takes in, for example, if you try to play a domino that you cannot play, it'll let you know. So for example, I'm going to play it six, which I cannot play. So you cannot play that domino. If you can play a domino and you want to skip, it won't let you do that. Because you can also do that, so you're going to skip. So you cannot skip. So you have to play a, a valid domino. So let's see, blue, one, which is zero, two. And if you see, it was previously 0, 2 here, and then it changed to 2, 0, so it can fit in with, with this current string. So. 4, 6, triple to 2, I go 2 and 6, okay. Bot one, play zero one. Bot two, play six three. Bot three, play three two. Yeah, it's really intricate. It's my turn at zero and two. Play. Uh, play zero three. Play zero. Yeah, and I like how you line up the dominoes. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty hard coming up with that. It's about three, three to five, and have four and five, and I'm gonna play this. Five and three, and if bot three doesn't skip, it's gonna end up winning. So play one round. All right, that's only one. Play this one. Okay. We play one. Bot one. Go two play one five is gonna bot three is gonna win. Yeah, bot three one. You will put in the person. Yeah. So that's what I said. If, if there's a dominant you can play on both sides, it'll let you know and then you can choose. Yeah, bot three is the champ. And um, basically, what I can show the oh yeah the main the main uh, the main class is basically just creating a deck, and then while 
the game is not over, just keep playing next, and then once it's over, you get the winner. So basically all the logic is inside the classes. So in the deck class, I want to say the... No, it's all the way down. The most interesting part, I would say, is... That's a lot of code. Yeah, so this basically is when the double six is not on the is double six is already on the table, so basically there's no restrictions. You can play whichever domino. And it's a bot. So this a player the player would turn is not you. So then what I did, this you get the available dominoes, which was another another function. If the available domino size is zero means you they cannot play, so they have to skip. So they skip the turn, and then it goes. If not, then I generate a hash map with the scores of the of the dominoes, which is another function, which basically takes in. I can go to that. Let's go get calculate domino scores. Where are we at? At the frequency. Calculate domino scores. So for all the available dominoes that the bot can play, it'll basically generate a score, and then here. I just go through all the hands first. I get the frequency, so how many, how many of each number each one has, and then here for everyone, if it's a if it's a double, then I hit I, I have it with the max value. So basically, they'll they'll have the max value, and then a in the next function, I'll I'll find the the domino with the max value. So if it's a double, it'll always play it first, and then if not, I have it with a the little function taking into account the the frequency that, that the bot has more. So if it has more threes, it's gonna play threes. That's basically how you actually play dominoes. And then here, that's where I have it here. So max value, the entry, the min value. And then for all the for all the entries in the scores, I get the I get the max value. And then that's one of that's the domino that he's gonna play. Hash map so magic then. It would be pretty interesting having the bots took it out and see who wins the most. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's basically it. I know I made a version would be interesting to watch. I know you can you can sit there all day. I mean you can make four bots. Oh yeah, could add that. Different sizes for different bots, yeah. Okay, that was that was awesome. Perfect. So we're, we're moving along great with the time and these these projects are just really, really good. So I guess if nobody has any other questions, then we can just uh, go ahead and end the stream and move on to the next student. But awesome, awesome work. Great. OK, so let's see. There was one other person, one more who uh, signed up for an in class project in class presentation so let's see who is next and then we can start showing the videos after then we can show videos not that videos are bad it's just that like if we run out of time we can just watch the videos on our own time but someone might have a class that starts at 750 so Okay, perfect. I'll mute myself and you can go.
the host and see like my actual IP of this computer. So let me try here. Client. So you can see here uh, that it shows that uh, we're waiting for connection. Oh, you guys still see Discord? Can you see that change to a different view of the now? Okay. So, like I was saying before, uh, I have the client and the server here, and after I click this, it goes in the server. There's a loop here that it waits for connection, and then once that tries to So basically, once it, once it, uh, Finds a connection, it automatically connects to the, to the client and to the server. So, for example, if I type in this in here, you can see it, it, it shows the messages here. So, and then it's, it's this basic server, it's basic chat room, like I said before. So, like the also, add, there was an add addition to to if you want to end the stream, the end the the chat as well, you just go ahead and press end and it closes all, all the streams and the, and the topics as well so you can see here it shows the closed connection, output the, uh, uh, it tries the same and again and it closes everything out and if something like bad happens it just goes in to tell me what, what happens if anything bad happens uh, yeah, I don't know what anything else to say so yes Yeah, yeah, I can. So here we, we search what we, we put it in to a port of 679, so server equals new new server socket. So like I, I when I was doing it I was watching uh, watching videos, so I was learning this while as I go. So like I kind of have a basic understanding of what it is, but the, the port is like where exactly where this application, this, this application here, is located. So what the um, client I think does is look for that application, and it connects to connects to it, and it's able to talk. great <clears throat> so nice work and we're doing great with time we're doing great with time so who is next Yeah, more users. That would be cool. And save the chats, things like that. <clears throat> but that's cool. Server sockets. We, we never discussed that in class. We never discussed that. So to see the code is really useful. Okay, super. All right. No volunteers for in-person? I think we've done everybody for in-person, right? Everybody else in-person is going to be on Wednesday. 
so we can we can start with showing videos or we can see what Leanne's typing. Um yeah, no, I agree. If if you look here, um let me share my screen. If if you look at the numbers, you guys can join the live stream. Um, you can see. Uh oh. All right. You you can see now. Um, three people signed up to do it today, right? Three people in person. So we've done three students. Oh, I see. So you're saying we go here to individual. I see. So we can see December 16th. Lewis is going to make a video. All right. Justin is going to go during class. Oh, the question tab. Ah, I see. So choose one. Oh, and then you can see who responded. Oh, yeah, that is pretty cool. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. <clears throat> well, I've already bragged about how good Leanne is at Excel. So you're also good at, at the Google uh, forms and stuff like that. Oh, and you did Google Spreadsheets, didn't you, for your presentation? I mean, for your final project. <laughs> Google programs are your homeland. All right. Well, let's see. I am going to end my screen sharing and then we can pick the first video. Ah, okay. That's fine. Well, wow, that would be pretty cool. Future Google CEO. So let's see. How about... Um, all right. So you sent me a message with it. Can you just paste it in here? All right. Perfect.
Basically, what um, here, this, this should be really not on the other stuff, but the YouTube comments. So, what's happening here is I'm going to start first with a, set, a settings class that I built, which has um, private members, it has getters, and it leaves everything from this settings config file. I wasn't sure how to create a settings file.
Well, that was that was very impressive. Um, the the Twitter API was it difficult? Was Twitter difficult? <clears throat> so you had to get permission from Twitter. <clears throat> Yeah, because I imagine, um, you know, they they want to keep what the bots can do. Yeah, yeah, because they they are afraid of bots on Twitter. Because um, you know, just for instance, I know there are a lot of Elon Musk fans in here. Elon Musk has a lot of bots that post about cryptocurrencies beneath his posts on Twitter. <clears throat> yeah <laughs> and it wouldn't let the the api would not let you post the same text repeated well that's good that they're trying to get get that under control with some of that but no i i thought that was excellent excellent work and um i guess the other question is did you enjoy working with java x java fx Cool. That's good. Yeah. More, yeah, more bells and whistles, but, you know, there's only so many hours in the day. It, only so many hours in the day. <clears throat> And yeah, you would be surprised that a lot of people start projects with JavaFX and they say, man, this is too complicated. I'm moving back to Swing. <laughs> so that's good that you that you enjoyed it and liked it. And pretty cool. <laughs> Jose. So let's see. In the end, um, all the projects today have been awesome. Who is next? So who'd like to show their video next? Let's Let's post the next... Let's post the next one. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. What about what about one of the video games? I know there were some people doing video games. 
let's let's post one of those. Perfect, Sergio. Great. Let's let's all click on that. How's it going everyone? This is Sergio, or else you guys call me Space Virgin. This is the channel name that I'm going to be doing. I'm also going to be uploading this on YouTube. But um, yeah, I'm going to be presenting what I've been working on with my project, with my game. It's been honestly insane, uh, everything that I've had to learn. But you know what? It's a work in progress. So yeah, let's jump into it. Alright, so before I go on and present my project and everything that I've worked on, I'd like to go to this channel because it it's really taught me a whole lot about game development and like stuff that I didn't even think about when creating like a game. I was interested in just, you know, the aspect of, you know, creating like collisions and just making the game, making the movements, creating like the event systems and stuff. But in this, this channel created like so many videos about how to get down to the nitty gritty stuff, the low level, level development stuff of game development. and. For me, it's a bit overwhelming. There's a whole lot of content in here, and this channel, I think, came out... I think this channel's been making videos since, like, 2020. It started in, like, 2020. And it's it's been going well. I'm pretty sure this channel's gonna grow, like, crazy soon. Oh, no, he's made... Okay, so he's made videos of, like, three years old. But it, it was just one video, but... Yeah, this channel hasn't been here for long, but it's been doing a lot of, uh, good content, I think, for anyone who's interested in game development. But, yeah, I just wanted to say this, you know, I'll probably do this in the link of the video. But yeah, check this guy out. He's cool. Alright, so here's the project. There's a bunch of files here with a bunch of folders, you know, for different things. Alright, here we go. So yeah, most of this is just an editor to, you know, be able to place blocks that's got um, snap-on. So basically you can snap onto anything and you can edit things and move them around. There's really not much to this. There is some examples to see what the, um, what the shaders can do and like collision we're still working on that but more or less this is what has been done throughout watching the series and everything which honestly yeah, i think it's <laughs> i think it's more than enough it looks very simple but we're both behind everything to create this it's it's insane honestly the most interesting thing about all of these files and all the programming that went behind this is the way the gpu reads like the images that you want to show on the screen. I, I didn't think it was that complicated. And it's, it's like, it, it's insane how much you have to think about when you're creating this. So in around episode five of um, his uh, series, he actually goes over like explaining what the, the vertex are and how to like, how everything just works. I'm still trying to wrap my head around all this, but he goes into a lot of detail for anybody who's interested in actually learning this because it's, it, it's, it, it's a lot of stuff that you gotta keep up with and you need to know this to be able to, you know, to be able to create at least an editor, you know, that, that runs how it's supposed to. It's crazy how much information you need to tell the GPU for it to just draw a 16 by 16 block. And it's not just that, you also gotta tell it like all the colors that the block's gonna be, like, what is it, like, it, it's mind-boggling. This is, um, like, crazy. I, I never thought I'd be learning any of this stuff. When I was, you know, determined to make a game, I, it, it kind of caught me off guard in a way. I'd like to also show you guys this other thing that I've been working on, which is the actual game that I wanted to make. I was, uh, I was so determined in making the, the actual game that I uh, got Game Maker Studio 2. And you guys haven't heard about this, it's, it's like a game engine. And uh, basically, it does all the back work for you, all the low level programming that I was trying to do. And it, it makes it much simpler so you can go straight to actually programming the game that you want. So I also want to show you guys this other project thing that I've been working on. This isn't necessarily Java. You guys can probably understand some of this stuff. It, it's it's called the language, I think, Delphi, I believe. 
Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of idea, as you can see, these are variables. These are like keyboard functions to, you know, get uh, input for buttons and stuff. And it's pretty simple to read. I'm sure you guys can probably have an idea of what things do. There's only like specific things like built-in functions, like place meeting. And you need like, it, it'll basically tell you in the bottom what you need if you are using a function. It's quite simple. And if you have any questions, you use the manual and the manual will pretty much pop up and it'll tell you what it does. So what I've done with this project, which is basically the same thing, uh, I'm still, you know, working on it. As you see, I have a nice little character. I've made movement. I've also made collision. I've made like a debug button, basically, that uh, turns on all the, the lines of where you collide. The red ones are collision boxes. Like right here, there's no collisions. I just go right through the building. But right here, there's all collisions. And these yellow ones are actually room transitions. So the reason I can't uh, move here is I have a specific way where you have to click in this area. If you click out here, it won't work, but if you click in here, voila, you're in another room. This would be like the inside of the house. And then this other one is basically just a walkthrough transition. If I just step in there, boom, I'm through. I just wanted to make the two different uh, transitions, one for entering doors, another one for entering uh, like different areas that are on the, the place. I've also tried, I've had a crack at creating an inventory. If you press E, it just shows up and um, I've made it so you can stack items together, but there's certain things that I don't like, like for example, when I'm picking something up, there's still that 19. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to change that, but it, it doesn't seem like it's going to be too difficult. But as for now, I think the hardest part it has been done. I also have a refresh button that, you know, resets everything and you get new items test out like if it's working or not as you can see you can change this boom and also if you click here it'll I guess replace it'll move around the two but this is kind of what I got going on I want to I definitely want to improve on this it's still a work in progress but I think I've been doing a pretty good job and this this whole place is gonna be moved this like this all this art this UI it's all you know placeholders to just get it working I will be moving this around. I don't even think I'm going to have a road. I might take off the road and just have like a regular, just a pathway. Although most of this stuff looks very simple. I had a hard time creating like the, the actual UI for the inventory. Like there was a bunch of stuff. There was, I had to make an enumerator, I think that's what it's called, to, to actually get this working. Yeah, these are, this is the enumerator of all the items that are for now in the game. And I'll of course be adding more to this. But it, it's it's been kind of annoying. There was a bunch of mistakes that I would just get stuck on, and I don't know, man. It, it honestly is just about getting frustrated and you know learning from that frustration and you know feeling well when you get something done. I thought programmers were you know just these insane geniuses that would just program anything, but no, it's 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 a work in progress, honestly, for any programmer. You just try and fail and then keep trying. You need a lot, a lot of patience, I've realized. And that's actually what's giving me confidence to, um, you know, try and, uh, and, and actually do something, create a game. Something that, you know, I'm, I would be proud of whenever I finish. I'm also trying with, um, the, back, going back to the other project, the one that I've been following along with. This, I, I'm, I'm trying to, um, to, like, begin writing lines and, like, comment everything out out of everything that happens in here. Just so well? I think whenever I go back to this, because one day I will go back to creating, like, I want to try to get rid of the crack at creating my own engine and doing everything, you know, by myself rather than using someone else's engine. And I, I want to have this as a, you know, reference with a bunch of comments on what happened and what everything does in here. If I ever use this again, this is with, um, I don't know if I said this before, but this is programmed with the lightweight, uh, game line, what, what was it called? LWJGL. Uh, framework. If you guys were wondering with, uh, how I did all this, but yeah, I think I'm quite proud of what I've done with all these. Uh, these well, this same project. I'm gonna count these both as one because they are trying to accomplish the same goal: is to make this uh, RPG game where you're gonna be recycling stuff off of a beach, and I'll probably add some farming into it as well because I know people love farming. But for now, I'm just going to worry about the most basic aspect, which is creating, you know, being able to, um, to pick off stuff of a beach and recycle it into a machine and then that machine 
I guess you'll get paid in some sort of way for that money and uh, you'll move on and progress and get it. It'll become easier for you. But yeah, guys, I'm quite proud of what I've made here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys are watching this through YouTube, thank you very much. I'm probably going to be doing more updates. I'm not going to be, you know, making, like, videos every week or anything like that. I'll only post a video if there's, you know, 100%, you know, there's going to be stuff to show. But for now, I guess this is, like, a good starting point to show, you know, what I first had, the, the, the most basic aspect. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. One last thing I forgot to mention, guys. I actually made a small beat song thing that I, you know, I was practicing to make uh, for the game. This isn't anything, you know, official, but I just wanted you guys to hear it. Wow, that was really cool. Very, very good. Such good quality today. Really, like record, record quality. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. Other questions, comments about game making. It'd be amazing. Well, I guess I have one. Was Delphi difficult? Super easy. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't look too crazy different, but. Um, Let's see. Um, like it was thanks to that language that C++ was easy for me. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. So you you had done some programming before last semester. I see. And maybe you had told me that before. <laughs> that's good that's good all right perfect great well sometimes it's hard to move on you want to keep talking about all these things forever but we have to so awesome who would like to show their video next Okay, perfect. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe Google Drive? Oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that will work. Yeah, just stream, stream from your computer.
Um, so click, click on screen. <clears throat> Here in Discord. Yes, very good. Leanne got it. Yeah, that's no that's no problem. All right, perfect. <clears throat> so, who would like to go next? So, who is next with a video? Let's see. How about let's see. I'll just randomly pick somebody. Um, do you have a video? Lisa? Professor, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I don't have a video. Uh -huh. Not that I didn't try to start. <laughs> so uh -huh. I just kept on messing up. So there was a thousand cuts. I don't know if I can just go ahead and share my screen and say it. I just get yeah. nervous. But... Well, if okay. listen, listen, if you want to no listen, if you want to um, make a video and do it for Wednesday, that's fine. It's not like it's not like we need to. I just randomly picked somebody. And since, you know, you would go to class, I just picked you. But no, okay. you can you can make the video for Wednesday. That's cool. Uh, oh, wait, Leanne said she's giving out encouragement. A thousand. I mean, <laughs> OK, I mean, we can give it a shot. OK, OK, I'll mute myself. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I did that clear cause like no one was listening like that, everyone. Okay. Can we confirm? Can you guys see my intelligence? Okay. So I went ahead and did a hangman game. It's very basic compared to everyone else's projects. <laughs> I was sitting here crying half the time. But anyway, just to start it out, I have two methods, one that's going to output the intro, the welcome message, and then um, I did see some people do ASCII values, but I just, like, ASCII hangman drawings, I just wanted to go ahead and do my own twist on it and make, like, prompts, um, especially, like, here at the end where it's like, it now has two arms and a leg, and you'll see how that ends. Moving on to my main method, I went ahead and used the file object to load in the file. That's what the word um, text file, these are all the words that'll be guessed by the user. So basically, I start by initializing an array list to hold the words. 
and then this is filling it with the words from that file. So while this file has a next line, add the word into the array list. Here is just a string for choosing the word that the user will be guessing, uh, randomly, of course. And then uh, once it selects the word, convert it to a character array. And this is the hold faces and also the uh, letter that the user is currently guessing. Um, here, I'm basically filling the values with just, this has no like meaning, it's just any random character. So later on, I can assign um, underscores to imitate the dashes that the user will be filling out. So regular uh, scanner to take the user's input, the user's guess, uh, this is calling that method with the output intro, and then the user guess. So um, I did try to make it to do while loop, was not working, so I just turned it into an if else statement. So if the user wants to play, and that is part of the prompt here, enter yes to play or no to quit, then go ahead and run this. So finished is a boolean that's set to false, and while it's equal to false, run all of this. Now, what is all of this? Let's get into it. Okay. Um, so this was just me being nitpicky. I put that if the user has guessed more than once to change the prompt from guess a single letter to guess another letter, because I just got annoyed seeing this constantly. Um, and then that's the counter to determine that. Um, input validation, in case the user wanted to put a number or anything that's not, um, you know, a letter, go ahead and tell them not to, and while they're not doing that, incorrect, prompt them again. Okay, so for this one, it's just checking what the user inputs. So for the entire length of the word that got selected, if the user's character at zero equals that, <coughs> index in the array at i, go ahead and record the, the right, go ahead and record the answer. Um, and then I put this prompt here to output that it was found, it's in the word, and then found equals true. And if it's not found, subtract the returns, which goes back up to this method in order for the prompt of where, like, if you already did a wrong guess, it's going to add the body part to the guy hanging from the pole. You know, hangman. Okay. Um, so yeah, the star was basically this. So if it's if there is a character star, <laughs> thanks. Don't you love the name? <laughs> Thank you. Um. So if there's a star at that index, go ahead and assign an underscore. And if not, go ahead and put the letter that was found. Um. And then you call that method man being hanged. And then, um, if, and there's two cases of if you're done or not. If you're done because you found the word, then finish equals true, you found the word. But if you've run out of tries, you're done as well because you didn't kill a man. So, you know, what else do you expect? And then that's my um, petty output of if the user wasted my time and just put no, they don't want to play, then okay, bye. So let's go ahead and try this. Uh, w. Sorry, there's no W in the word. From afar, now hanging on the pole is ahead. Um, J. Uh, I don't know. R? And then that's it. I got none of the letters, so um, the body now has, oh, actually that is the wrong output there, but oh no, you hung a man, game over, and that's about it. So, any questions? What did you think was the hardest part of making Hangman? You want to know, honestly, that at the end where you see the wrong, um, prompt appearing the counters 
and I think I still have an issue with my counters being triggered by my flags. They're not, either I have them wrong, like in reverse positions, but it seems every time I fix one true-false statement, it ruins something else. So one thing would start working, then it's like go dissect the other one and figure out what's wrong. I see. So that's probably the most annoying. And then all the, the arrays, because then, like, if you see here, you just have to do <clears throat> so many comparisons and remember which one you're comparing to what. So what arrays holding what, what's holding the other. It was kind of like full circling all the time. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think there's a request. Somebody says, can you actually win? Can you try to rerun it? Maybe we can we can get it this time. Okay. Let's see. All right, let's try the vowels, right? E. Now, th is it case sensitive? Oh, no, no, try A, no. try A. You got to do A. Yeah, okay, now we all know what it is. <laughs> Michael oh, says yeah. it, Java. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so it can be one. But you see, there it's not triggering. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I put, if done, you found the word. And I think there's a flag issue, or I don't know why it keeps on, why is it not, come back. Why it's not implementing, or I think what's happening is here. Once this gets set to false once, when it runs again, it's not, it's automatically, okay, done has already been set equal to false. Oh, so yeah, it yeah. Switch again. Le Leanne's saying resetting the flag if it loops back around the next turn. That might be, it might just be that, that issue. Okay, so I can do another counter. Like, so once this is run, like well, do it outside of here. Well, it's, it's like you set it to be false, but then just inside that same loop, to set it to be true at some point. Okay. So, all right. Well, that was good. Very good. And uh, excellent. All right. Perfect. Uh, yeah, just put it back to default at the beginning. That sounds good. All right. Now, are we ready for the last one of the day? Last of the day. All right, so let's see. I guess Lisa's got Michael Scott. <laughs> and we still hear you, you typing, Lisa. My bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No, it's good. It's a mechanical keyboard. <laughs> All right. So we have time for one more person. Um, I guess... There wasn't a response, so any any other volunteers? Any other volunteers to finish the night? <laughs> it's hard when you don't have a schedule because you always have to say who's next, who's next. But because of technical issues, I don't I don't make it like I don't make you sign up ahead of time because then something doesn't work and somebody has to fix it. So we just hear the, the crickets. All right. So let's see. Let's count how many people did present today. So we had one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Six. Hmm. Yeah, we really should have one, one more person present today. Nice. That is a good keyboard. Yeah, I mean, mechanical keyboards are very distinctive, right? You can you can always hear a mechanical keyboard.
<laughs> my colleagues, my colleague used to make fun when I got one. But I think they're great. They can hear the keys? Wow, that unbelievable, unreal. I think they do. Oh, just listening in and they can hear the what key you're pressing. Amazing. How somebody could even come up with that. Yeah, that's what my colleague would say. He'd walk by and he'd say clack, 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 clack when he'd walk by the door because he'd hear me with the keyboard. Yeah, I think so, but that's okay. We'll we'll see if there's any other volunteer, and then if not, we'll just end things uh, a bit early. So last volunteer. Oh, perfect. Great. All right. So I'll mute myself, and you can take it away. Hey guys, for my final project, I went with a unit converter. So let me go ahead and run it for you. Okay, so I have length, volume, and temperature. And I have miles, and I have yards. So basically, you press go. Uh, you get selected length is and converted to, so I have miles to yards, and then I have one, for example, and then it gives you the result, 1,760. So for volume, you have a list of uh, volume conversions that you can do, for example, gallons, and then cups, and can you press go, get gallons and cups, and then user types in one, for example, let's type two, and then click submit, and then they get 32. Uh, 32 cups. The last one here is the temperature. They select a temperature. So I have Celsius and Fahrenheit. I'll select Celsius, press go, and then type in 30, submit, and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me talk you through the code. Where I start the code, I have all my text fields right here for the length now and as I scroll down you'll see the, the combo boxes um, that take information from the from, from the arrays and auto fill the fields um, and then the last part would, would, would be the go button and the submit button, which I have to go uh, at the end. Um, then I have my computations right here. As you go further down, the volume starts, and then you have all the labels, all the text fields, combo boxes, and J, and the uh, button. Uh, we keep going down, and we basically have the same pattern. Um, I used the designer tool. Uh, and I'll take you to the designer tool real quick. So I use the designer tool and I auto generated some of the code or a lot of the code. And then I had to put some logic into it. So I, I put, I put the logic into it, put the conversions, uh, I have the formulas here on a separate file. And after I generated all the code and everything, I had to sort of refractor everything because what the design tool does is that it starts putting it in um, the code as you're as you're putting as you're dragging and dropping it into into the the designer tool. So you have to sort of go back later and sort of rearrange everything so it doesn't look so 
uh, random. I think that was one of the things that took me the longest, aside from from uh, from the logic part. But uh, and oh, this part right here is is a uh, is a conversion that you have uh, separate from the formula that did it right into the right into the uh, part where the where the submit button went. Uh, another thing, uh, if I run it again, that I want to mention is if you put something in, something random, uh, like, I don't know, something like you, and click submit, you will get an error message. Please enter a valid number, uh, which is over here on the try cache uh, part of the code. And uh, that's basically it. Sorry guys, I'm new to Discord. I've been new to everything this semester. <laughs> no, but they, you shouldn't be modest. That was really good. Um, I think that that in the end, it, it works great. It's super useful. So I think today's been a, a great success. Any any last questions? Oh, I guess I have one question. What made you pick Discord? I mean, not Discord. <laughs> I picked Discord. What made you pick Eclipse? Since I began, um, I, I wanted Eclipse. I, I, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube, and I thought if I just use Eclipse, uh, which is just like the, all the videos on YouTube, I could get a, a better feel and just something to be accustomed to seeing all the time. Ah, okay. So you picked it because when you looked at tutorials, they used Eclipse, and then when you'd see... Replit, like the, the difference in the UI, you just felt more comfortable using Eclipse. Oh, that, yeah. all right, perfect. Makes makes a lot of makes a lot of great sense. All right, cool. So we can uh, end the stream, and then I don't think there's enough time for any more today. So we'll just call it a night, and it's been super successful. So look forward to seeing everybody back uh, Wednesday, six o'clock. So see you on Wednesday.